This is Inside Outlands. I'm your host, Nat Ryle, and today we are hosting a, a PvP panel. I've kind of got a collection of guys here. So we, we got uh, Blacklisted, the KK, and Z. Um, we, we had Akasha. He had a, he had some real-life difficulty, so we went and got Blacklisted midstream, and he was gracious enough to, to join us. What, what, what's going on, guys? Hello. Hello. Thanks for having me. Yeah, let's just do a quick introduction. Um, kind of go over your UO background, uh, who you're currently playing with, and and maybe like what part of the game you engage with the most. Uh, so, so Blacklisted, you're up first. Uh, I've played probably since I was like 12 or 13. Got started watching my older stepbrother play. I think the first few years of me playing the game on and off was kind of just walking around, checking stuff out. Played Dexter for a little while. Started to get more into uh, PvP and AOS and post-AOS. I ran with a uh, guild named Hacks there. That's kind of where we came up with uh, Blacklisted, a bunch of guys, and then played OSI all the way up until 2014 when I left due to lack of population. Then about 2015, I found free servers and jumped around a little bit and ended up here probably about five months ago, four months ago, somewhere around then. Yeah, you're uh, you're unique in, in that you're kind of late to, to Outland's back bandwagon. Yeah, I had some complications. I played here early on, but not like I should have. It was more like a log in for 30 minutes a week and farm in a dungeon for a minute. Not like I should have. I'm here now. And, and but KK, you've been around forever since, since beta, I think, right? So what uh, what's your kind of your background? Um, Well, pretty much I've been... Uh, I played OSI when I was like six years old with my dad. And from there, like, I rediscovered the game, like, around 2010, pretty much. And from there, I don't know, I just hopped around free servers until I found, uh, I think it was IPY2, when, like, the, the first real PvP server I played. And from there, like, I started playing uh, IPY-style PvP. I got, like, decent at it, and that's how we got here, pretty much. Like, we went from, like, several servers, like Relpor and Ancorp to get here, but here we are. <laughs> Jeez. And uh, last but not least, uh, Z from Anarchy. Um, yeah, I, I started playing UO back in the day. Most of most of these guys um, played until Samurai Empire, I think. Uh, that was the uh, end for me in terms of classic UO. And then I gave a 10-year break, I think, more or less. Then I started playing again in uh, 2016. Played in Renaissance, your Renaissance. Uh, played briefly in Forever. Uh, but formed anarchy in uh, in Renaissance, and then yeah, we are here now. Moved to Outlands. Yeah, and uh, so Z, you're with you're with Anarchy, but but Blacklisted, who are you, who are you running with? And same with you, but KK. Um, I came over here and right as money was leaving, like two weeks, and I knew a lot of those guys from prior shard that I played on, and they took me under their wing. So I tend to stick with uh, Flube and our local shard CX Viton. All uh, right, and I'm currently playing with Sup, which are like some old friends of mine from Ancorp when we used to play there. And uh, I also didn't mention too at the beginning of the show, but I, I've a uh, I've got a new co-host, uh, Ace Mason. Um, so Ace, why don't you introduce yourself and, and let everyone know who you are? Good evening. Um, I've been playing UO since oh crap ninety nine two thousand. Uh, played OSI on Great Lakes and Catskills up until AOS. And left, actually played Shadowbane for quite a while and then came back in the IPY era and I've hopped around probably most of the same jars these guys have. Um, but I'm currently uh, playing with Lunk, um, which a lot of those guys have left. So I'm, I'm kind of playing solo right now. But uh, real life's taking up a lot of time. So it's been uh, on and off. That's my playtime. All right, guys. So uh, thank you all for, for agreeing to get on here and spend, spend an hour talking about this stuff. But we have a. Huge PvP patch, you know, months in the workings from Luthius and, and Owen and the guys. Uh, it's supposed to drop this Friday. So I've kind of, what I've done here, I've put together a, uh, like a, just kind of quick short notes here on the, on the big highlight points from from the patch. We'll, we'll start run through them and kind of get your guys feedback. I'll let you guys kind of bounce off each other and, and give your thoughts and maybe what you like, what you don't like, or, you know, what you hope in the future. So, First up are some pretty big mechanical tweaks. Uh, looks like they're changing pots. Uh, the Halley swing, it's, it's going to 3D6. Uh, the big one is fireball. It's a lot more damage to fireball. Um, 
And then the really huge is the now you can't toggle war mode to get to stop your punch. So everyone will always do a punch right after they cast. So you got to actually like pull back away from your enemy to not punch. Um, yeah, I mean, it seems this this patch is kind of around the consistency in terms of both the heli and the greater heal portions. They um, they're going to do more consistent consistent damage. It's much more unlikely to do really low rolls or high rolls. Um, similar with the cooldown interrupts, you don't have the 50% harm chance, kind of like a hit interrupt, which was annoying. Um, and also uh, the punch. Um, it wasn't really that big a deal, but some people found a way to uh, make a steam macro too. It was just really like a really small group of people were using that mechanic, but it's going to... Um, disable that so if you're one tile from someone you're always going to punch which is how it's supposed to be it was just kind of like an artifact of steam that enabled that so i think all these changes are quite cool, good honestly uh, maybe we'll see more fireballs this is a small buff 10 percent, maybe one damage buff but other than that i'm quite happy with this uh change i think it's going to change the dueling for better all right um as far as the heli change, I think it's probably not going to make that much of a difference. It's not going to be very noticeable. Uh, it'll be something like maybe maybe it'll, it'll help a little bit in terms of the high burst because like what they did basically like uh, used to be two dice, now it's three dice. So the more dice you add to the roll, like the more consistent the damage is going to be. Essentially, it's going to be closer to the average more of the time. Like it used to be like before in beta when we changed the weapons, it used to be. Uh, just like one roll for the for the damage, right? So you'd have like all the way from six to like forty, like uh, spread out all the time. You didn't have like more consistent hits most of the time. And with three dice, it should be a lot better. We'll see. As far as the pots, I think it's a very minor change. I don't know. Uh, I guess like the, like people will complain less about the higher end if uh, with the twenty six as opposed to the thirty, right? Uh, the fireball change, I I do like the fireball change being like a more useful spell in terms of damage. But I think like lightning should have been changed too, because like it's too similar to lightning right now in terms of like you're spending the same mana for the same damage delay. I think like that needs to be addressed in terms of the lightning. Uh, what else? As far as the the toggle on war mode. I mean, people definitely do uh, macro it, and for for duelists, it is a big deal in terms of just you can tell when somebody like uses Steam to tab essentially. Uh, as to like how important that is, you, you could always do it in Razor, you could always do it in the client, but like when you did it that way, it never was perfect. Like you could always like exploit that if somebody did it because it, it didn't do it right away. With Steam, the, the difference is. It does it like instantly, so there's no way to actually force that punch. With this change, you can actually force the punch. Uh, in terms of the the fireball, the damage delay is actually like 500 milliseconds, and lightning is like much closer to instant. So there's that difference. Also, the cast times are different. Right. When, when you factor in the cast time of both those spells, they end up being the same pretty much when you add the damage delay and the cast time. So that's why they're like they're too similar. They're also making it so poison and fireball are on a different disrupt cycle as well, right? That's this right. Point, I, I didn't have that in here, but they they are changing some disrupt. I think that's good. Is that still in the sure. patch notes? Because I I didn't see it. Yeah, maybe I, I saw it, it at one point, but I don't see it anymore. So they might have. They might have removed it. Ah, okay. Yeah, they might have removed it. But I think you guys both nailed it on the head. These are these are big arena changes. Um, while there is some implication in the field, um, I think the the biggest, the biggest people that are going to notice these are people that are, are duelists, uh, first and foremost. You will notice the Howley change, like most of all of these in the field, because you're just going to notice you're going to get hit, hit by Howleys all the time, so you're going to notice. Is it enough to where the Howley hit comes besides just the first hit, or it's going from what a two d six or three d six, right? I mean, it's, it's not going to be a huge difference, but. It's more. It's going to be more mid range damage. You're not going to see those low low hits and those high high hits. It's going to be more evened out, to my understanding. I haven't actually been on there and played with it though. Like to hit like old dice, you have like forty percent chance to hit at least thirty. Uh, with the new, it's still the same. 
but when you go to like 40 damage, you used to have like 7% chance to hit 40. Um, now it's right. more like 3, 3%. So yeah. like the outliers are significantly, it's going to be reduced, which is good because you already have the RNG from the hit chance. You have 50% hit chance. On top of that, you have a just really wild RNG. It was really inconsistent. So I think it's, it's going to make, it increases the skill ceiling in my opinion. So yeah. that's the, that's the thing through this whole patch notes is, uh, is making everything more consistent as far as any kind of number of tweaks they did, kind of getting rid of the RNG, I guess, uh, uh, the element in that. Let's gotcha. get to a little more interesting part of here. So the aggression restriction, it, it's I mean now it's pretty big. It's a uh, but it's going. It's become account wide now, not just character wide. But to counteract the the hurt of it being account wide, it's now region based. So if you were to drop somebody in Cavernum, then you'd have to move to. You know, like a mausoleum or something. But are you sure about that? Account. Yeah, yeah, that's how they're changing it. Well, the reason they initially wanted to change it is because, like, I have three PKs on one account. One dies, I just log him off and log on the other one. And until he dies, I log him off, log the other one on, and then I res them all at the end, and then they all share the same timer, so to speak. So that wasn't intended, obviously. So people talked about making you go into a non-aggression when you die instantly, but I don't know that I don't know. kind of screws us who have invested all our stuff into making a bunch of PKs, which this, this change is going to as well, but I think, I don't know. I think it's kind of helping PKs because you're going to have less time being down altogether. To be honest, I don't really think it needed change. Yeah, I mean, it seems to like change like, the the need for multiple PKs and it like it still like does what the system needs it to do pretty much like if somebody kills you in a dungeon like they're safe for a little bit right that's, yeah. that's the point of, that's the original thing the system was supposed to do but rather it, than having to kill them yeah. three right. four or five times yeah yeah so or, or fine, fifteen yeah. times in the case of of someone that has more than you blacklisted you know they have eight ten characters the but, heat of but, battle thing is more that yeah irritates me. But what's cool about this though is you can fight someone out of a dungeon, but then you're not you're not stopping them from all content. They can still go seek it in other dungeons, um, but you can still kind of win that battlefield. You just have to fight off now three accounts, not not fifteen characters. Yeah, it's not a bad change. Um, the location one is good, like it, it's good for PKs. But like one of the worst things about this aggression restriction is. Let's say you're in a fight, you're on reds, you're fighting some enemy guild. Even if they're not blues, even if you're not PKing, you happen to be on a red, you lose characters that guys out of the fight can't attack other blues, something, you know, because people go, I mean, especially in these raids where like blues and oranges are everywhere, the PK slowly get the middle down. So it really hinders the raid. And people like, as, as long as you can somehow kill a PK, every time you kill someone, you come back, the boss is still up. The PKs will slowly lose their numbers. So I, I already said a problem with the one out, like the, ag- the aggression restriction. Like the money is fine, so it it kind of enables PKs to go some other dungeon, maybe keep PKing. But I don't think it it just restricts people from playing the fight, which I am totally against. I I really don't like that mechanic at all. I don't think there should be anything that really prevents people from playing. Yeah, you can pay the price, but this literally just stops you from fighting. So. I say it's I mean, a good stuff, but it's not enough. Is what I'm thinking about this. I mean, one. you could still like you could still stay, stick around and heal, for example, and let let your other teammates sink dump or whatever. So it's I don't I don't think it's that big of a deal to be honest. I mean, and you can always just switch character anyway, like switch account and fucking you still have. Like, yeah, if there's okay. a base around it, then why is why is there such a mechanic? If 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 it's not I a big know. deal, why why it's there? It's just I don't know. It's just it's just what they want, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It gives blues less to complain about. That's that's the point. Of the yes. <laughs> well, you got to think Owen's position is probably difficult because he's got to try and please everyone. Yeah. That's yeah. where that came from. Yeah, there's a balance to be struck. Uh, I think this way, this is a good one. I think it makes all of us happy. At least, uh, well, we haven't seen it live yet, so we'll see it in action come this weekend. Someone mentioned heat of battle, and I think that's, uh, I, th- I think that's probably. I mean, I might be outside the notes, but I think that's probably a good bridge into heat of battle. The thing, the thing that gets me about Heat of Battle is not so much, you know, they, they have it in place so people will fight back, right? And they can still jump the gate. But I've ran into complications 
And I know some others where you're fighting like a, a group of people and you, you're outnumbered and then half of them hit the gate and then just recall to the front to cut you off. And I think that's where it becomes a problem. Like you're already engaged with all these people and like three of them leave to hit the gate to cut you off as you're running away from three or four more. But you've already teleported past or whatever. And I think that's a little How many somebody explain to me how heated battle works currently and then what they're changing? So basically, as long as you attack a red or a gray, you can hop the gate. You can ha- you can attack a red and be standing right on the gate without them flagging you first, and then and then you can just leave as soon as they aggress or whenever you want, basically. Which isn't really terrible until it starts getting abused for like cutoffs and stuff. So to clarify, that will be the new version. Currently, if you're on a blue and you see a red and you attack first, you get flagged in heat of battle. You cannot leave. Um, and, and you're stuck there to fight. So most blues will not even engage. You know, tamers say, I'll follow me, run to the gate. A Dexter's going to run to the gate. Because um, most of us are running glass cannon PVM builds. Um, so you're not getting actual engaging PVP, field PVP, um, which I think a lot of people this afternoon were complaining about. So I think this you know, changes will give a blue um, the ability to attack a red um, and be proactive about it. Or most of the time now they're running, um, which I think I, I get as a as a PVMer probably first before a PVPer. Um, I'm usually at half health. I'm managing my mana. I'm managing my pets. I'm doing a lot of things. And to get jumped by red is almost certain death. Um, so if I can be proactive, see them run, and attack them, and still have a chance to maybe get out if things don't go my way. And, and blacklisted, you're, you're worried about people abusing it. Oh, it's been abused. And that's how it is now. You can attack somebody and jump a gate, and I think they're continuing to leave it that way. I think I, mean, I think that just highlights the problem with the gates in the first place, not the heat of battle. But yeah, like I don't think the heat of battle change to like let blues just ignore it is a good idea at all. It's just a problem with the gates. Like It just boils down to the gates in the end. I think it used to be if you're a red yourself, you could attack a red and still gate out. But now you... Flag heat of battle now. If you're a red and if you attack another red, I think the, the change the is to prevent blues from flagging heat of battle. I think that's the change, isn't it? I don't think they flagged. Like I didn't realize, but I thought they didn't. They did flag. before. They though. do not flag. They used to, but they changed it. I'd say. When did they change like that? Month, that's my month or two ago, like a month really? or two ago. Yeah. So like they're doubling down on it. <laughs> so why is no, it they, in the PVP patch then? Because no, I think they, it's already they, in then. They changed it's already it. And reverted in, it. Right? No, they changed it and reverted it two, three months ago. Okay, interesting. Okay. And now I believe they're putting it back in. We might have to get clarification there. To my knowledge, it's already back in because this just happened to me like the other day. I was fighting a group and like half of them had flagged first and they still jumped out, cut me off. If you perform an aggressive action against a character that appears blue, orange, or purple, you flag heat of battle. If you're a criminal and you perform an aggressive action against a character that appears gray or red, you would flag heat of battle. So it's still going to be... If you're red, you still won't flag. Yeah. I think I, I mentioned that because when I mentioned something to Owen about it, he said bring it up in the patch. So I was... I was so reds can't it. attack reds without Hito Battle anymore. I think... I think Because right. I was able to recall out when I was a red, I attack a red, I recall out, right? Now it's no longer... Is that really a thing? Yeah, I think I think so. I'm pretty, well, pretty sure. Reds attacking reds? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. At least that's a good part of it, but the blue thing is still bad. It's so bad. Like, to be honest with you, there's so many gates. First of all, heat of battle should be when the red flags the blue, the blue needs to get heat of battle and can't recall out. There's so many trap exits. Every dungeon, there's literally like any kind of semi aware blue should never get PK'd in a dungeon. There's only one way to enter a dungeon. You know where they're coming from, you know where the gate is. They're on foot. How can they catch up to you? I just don't. That's what I tell people too. As long as you do blues need more incentive. Like, I don't think. Like I just, it baffles me. It's just, might as well. I just think people don't want real risk. People just want I mean, the illusion I, of I, danger. They I just don't want think to blues like want to fight getting... back in the first place, honestly. No. So I don't think this will change much. It'll just like let people abuse blues, basically, with the gates. Yeah, it's I just, I, obviously, as a PK, I would prefer. Same thing. They're not going to fight back unless, really, they're going to run anyway. And as long as you position yourself in between the entrance and the gate then you're going to get away every time i think the only problem comes into is when you're fighting a group and half of them are already flagged to you they flagged you and then they jump out to cut you off when you teleport it past and you're trying to get away it's 6v1 
then the three that you just teleported past just leave, recall back to the front of the dungeon. Now you have to try and get past them again. Well, they, they keep touching on this mechanic. It's, at, at this point, they've altered it ten times or something like that. So this probably won't be the last they 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 revisit heat of battle. Either way, we're gonna find out this weekend uh, what it's like in the field. Yeah, I'm sure I can change it later. Yeah, once it goes live, I'm sure uh, it'll be fleshed out even more when more people test it and give their feedback. Yeah, I think that's been one of their their biggest issues is lack of testing on the on the test server. So so now we're gonna get to taming, uh, which is a big topic with PVPers, um, at least as far as field PVP goes and how powerful tamers are. This this is a lot of tweaks. I think they've had at least. This section here has had the most tweaks since probably version one with different various numbers and formulas and trying to get this part right. Uh, it looks like they, they want to basically they, they want to buff the speed but nerf the damage so that it's more uh, quality of life for tamer, but at the same time, they're not as, as effective in PvP. That's kind of what I got out of this. Depends on the user if. They are able to switch between all follow and all kill, um, because I think it just slows down when they're when you're all killing, not necessarily when they're in PvP. If I'm understanding it correctly, for blue, yes, not for red. Currently, currently, the way they're changing it, it's always going to be fast. I do believe, but they're toning down the damage a lot, and they're getting rid of. Well, they're not getting rid of the special abilities, but they're dialing them way back. Because yeah, like, I've, I've had a, issues. There's a new patch, uh, well, a new note in the very bottom from Jaden, where now if you do a melee attack, the next second there can be no specials, which which stops 99.9 percent of all of the like instant kills in the game. Not all of them. Let's just say like cats can still get you pretty good. I don't know. I think with this one, uh, it's kind of a wait and see thing because we don't really know. Like we we've seen all these numbers. Like it's been crunched so many times. There's been so many PvP patches uh, for tamers. I think we just have to wait and see on this one because I don't know. It's been like pets have been selectively nerfed so many times that they're finally doing like a more comprehensive change. So we'll see how it goes. I think. Kind of interested because you said cats, and th- there is one note that I think has gotten missed a lot. Um, any single damaging ability by a tame pet may not exceed 10 times the number of control slots. So a one slot pet can only hit up for 10. So max with five cats, you're taking 50 damage max. Right. And that's still that's still a lot if you're getting sync dumped on. By it's team. not near as bad as what it was, though. Um, Two of those things see. touch you, it's done. I mean, like, with, with the, what I'm worried about is the pet speed in combination with that. I'm not sure how much the accuracy, like, played into that. They're changing the accuracy, too, so we'll have to see, honestly. It just seems like cats always, like, melted you the second they touched you. There was a, um, the pets can't interrupt in the previous patch notes, if I remember correctly. Is that still in, the, they can't interrupt spells? Yes, I believe they're leaving that. I just okay. haven't seen that in the notes, so I'm not sure on that. Yeah, I, maybe I, I just missed it. That would be pretty good, but I mean, honestly, like let's say you have a five X mage. What two skills can you take? That's the best. It's taming. There's no really good way to nerf taming because it's simply the best. Like you will never get close to level like a damage of a tamer. Let's say swords and tactics, right? So like these kind of nerves are nice. It's good, but it's always like tamers. They just like more less skilled players tend to play mm-hmm. tamers, so that's why I mean, we don't see the effects. But if the good people actually play tamers. It would be like total chaos. Yes, like in the dungeons, it would, and like especially because like even if you take archery as a ranged option, it's not as good as taming. Like it just doesn't do as much damage. Yeah, it's just because it's autopilot. You can just all kill and just do whatever. Yeah, well, it's good. Good start. Good step in the right direction. Good stuff. See, always welcome. Nerf taming, you're always welcome. You know, good stuff. I think everybody agrees there. Do you guys feel like there needs to be a balance though between PvP tamers that are maybe red or straight PKs first giving blues a little bit and tam- tamer blues a little bit of room to fight back against, say, a tank mage or an archer mage or a stealth mage that's, that's crawling the dungeons? After all the boss guilds have been abusing this for so long, no, fuck them. <laughs> Honestly, no. <laughs> uh, they had their fun. Now I mean, nerfs. They shouldn't totally neuter tamers either. I mean, those people put a lot of work in, but the way it stands now, like 
I, I have a clip of literally getting hit with 192 damage in two seconds. I cast one spell, teleport, to get away. And I, I've watched right. it in slow-mo and counted up the damage, and it was 192 damage from a bulvore in two seconds. Yeah, that's the stuff they want gone. Uh, and if this doesn't fix it, I think they'll they'll keep at it. I mean, the issue is, like, anytime any nerf is being discussed, like, all the tamers cry foul like instantly. They're like, "Oh my god, we're we're neutered now. We're nerfed. No, we can't kill people anymore." It's like they're not, you're not supposed to like be a fucking PvP build in the first place. It's supposed to be a primarily PvM build. And like, if you you have some PvP defense with it, but you don't get to fucking be the best at PvP at the same time, that's that should be where the balance comes in, right? I agree. Yep. Yeah. All right, so we got a lot to cover, and I want to make sure we get to, to all of it. We're, we're going to skip, uh, unless anyone has something they really want to say about Polymorph. I, I want to get to the... Uh, I don't think they should change it. They should leave... I mean, I do. I do, too. doesn't matter all to right. me. So we, we, it looks like most of the panel wants to have it not change, but... Uh, it's a dumb change. Like, it shouldn't be happening. Like, people, like, whiners complained about it, and that's why it's getting changed. Fucking Especially stupid. when there's, you know, unlockable things in the game that enhance your polymorph and you exactly take it away from the people who use it just to have fun themselves you know yeah, it's basically actually, no fun allowed with that fucking ch- with that chain no fun allowed I've actually with classic got a lot Evo, of... you can pull bars so easy yeah, exactly I've, I've heard a lot of uh the, the rp community too kind of cry out a little bit um orcs in particular that like to use it um it's but I, I i found a lot of pks that are slimes and chickens and stuff in dungeons too so i get both sides you can target them, like you can cycle through transformations anyway. Just have like in Steam or whatever, instead of humanoid, just use both. It's simple. It's been thought of. It's been around forever. There's solutions for it. I don't I never thought it was a big deal. People Doesn't just whine, matter. dude. People whine, yeah. All right. So the, the meat and potatoes of this patch is really this uh four hour cycle across these four events. So you're gonna go from a struggle to CCC to a siege to a dungeon flashpoint. Each one has various rewards. They all kind of work a little differently. But I think the idea is to give the PvP community an event they go to every hour and count on to smash into each other with their PvP builds and uh, and work together as a guild to kind of there's some progression. There's these reward points you work for, T4 chest loot. Um, each one kind of gives a little. Like uh, I think the sieges give a uh, gold from the vendors, and the flashpoints give gold from the last twenty four hours of gold made in the dungeon. So, so there's actually like real stuff to fight over and gain, and kind of get rewards from. It's it's the next evolution of the current system we have now. Is struggles taking the freedom system, but then piling this on into like a guild versus guild system. I think this is going to be awesome. It's going to give something to do. All the time, and people were going to be more apt to show up because there's rewards at all of them. Well, I say that, but then Anarchy sits at CCC with nobody to fight night after night. Yeah, that's yeah. It it turns off a lot of people from the game just not having competition. People I'm just thinking be... it might be too late for the, for this to have like any noticeable effect. Like I don't know. I wouldn't say too late. I think maybe bad timing because yeah, half I'll our see. players playing WoW at the minute, but they'll be back. Mm. Yeah, we'll see if they come back. They always come back. <laughs> they will. <laughs> well, with EO servers, it tends not it tends not to be the case. People just quit and they don't come back. But we'll see. I can't really yeah, speculate. I, 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 I am not a PvPer, so this is not what I would have wanted. But is this what PvPers wanted? That's kind of what I'm curious to know. It gives us an alternative, something to do all the time. Like rather than just PKing every hour, there's going to be you figure there's going to be somebody to fight. I think the best answer for that is PvPers wanted it before, and now they quit, or so, a lot of them quit. So it's I don't know. We'll see if they come back. I guess maybe. Yeah, I I, I can't really speculate. Like I said, on the the effects on the population, we'll see. But in terms of the mechanics, I like CCC. I like the um, the faction points, flash points, because like you have the King of the Hill, you just hold one spot. It's simple. The tactics are. The meta is kind of apparent to everyone. Just get get close to the chest, right? With the faction struggles, you have three points. It's not that complex, but it's not really fun to go around on foot from point to point trying to, you know, people dodge you. But with the additional uh, points from kills and stuff, we'll see how it 
maybe it'll become more fun because right now the faction struggles are just it's a it's a chore it's not fun similar with the castle sieges i don't know i can't really speculate but we'll see we'll play it if it's a good game then we'll enjoy it um i'm just glad they they're doing something they're giving us something to play and to test if it's good or not you know we'll, we'll see if we like it or not uh, yeah, the thing with the struggles is it's too much of a mini game in my opinion, and that turns people off. Like, I know if Akashi was here, he'd be like saying how he likes the struggle. It just puts people into PvP that would never PvP otherwise. But I don't know. Yeah, these these are four mini PvP events, kind of style it off in the rest of the world. It's probably just gonna be still too much of a mini game for most people. Like, and the no the no loot thing like turns people off too. Like, if they're serious PvPers. There's just no like real incentive. I think I don't know. Yeah, I, like looting is not even about the loot itself. It's more about like the feeling of winning, like you won, right? Yeah, you exactly. Get, get to hit their root. That's it. And yeah, you just fucked up somebody's day. That's that's the, <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> they have a bank on them. I do like the flashpoint change because I have, like my first month here, I went to like all the flashpoints and I never seen anybody else there hardly ever unless they knew i was there from watching my stream and then they were like oh black's there i'm gonna go fight him but nine times out of ten there's there's nobody there so people will show up i think even if it's it's not gonna be a shit ton maybe but people will show up we just need to hope that we get the right amount of love because every pvp they they have this like perfect enemy in their mind they want people for instance for us we want people on horses you know doing sync drops no tamers it's like it's clean play some people want to fight in dungeons so if we see you know 10 tamers on the on the point like regular farmers who usually do bosses but now oh, there's a pvp content that we can also partake in and they zerg with pets if maybe it will be not much fun for us but we'll see we, we can't I really mean, like it <laughs> as long as the tamers are balanced it should be much less of a mo- like much yeah. less of an impact like you won't have to worry about them all that much i don't know i'm hopeful that it'll be good i think i think it's I think it's going to be great, honestly. Yeah, we'll That's see. the weirdest part of that is the dungeon flashpoint. All the mobs die before the start of the event. So it's still just player versus player and the part of the dungeon that is normal during live play, which is all the mob interaction and the shit you have to deal with. All that's gone. It's just going to be player. I guess it's on level one, which is not that big of a deal, but I'd almost rather see this get moved to like level two or three and have the mobs stay in. I mean, it, it does partly like get rid of the whole point of being in a dungeon for the event, but at the same time, I, PvPers don't like dealing with mobs while they're fighting people, so it's, it's I don't know, it's a hard it like fun. thing. Like, it's hard to say like uh, which would be better. I mean, I know like you wouldn't want to do uh, you want you wouldn't you wouldn't want to do flashpoints on like level three mobs. We have elder vamps. <laughs> Uh, that would be the worst thing ever. So I could see where they're going with it, but with level one mobs, like I don't think it's that bad. I don't know. Yeah, I don't. I guess uh, these just all seem like four very similar events. Um, and so maybe to give each one more of a flavor, instead of just being the same exact event, just a different, a different kind of style and different location. I, I, yeah, I don't know about the rest of you guys, but I feel the most rushed, the most fun. You know, when I'm PvPing in the dungeon, chasing someone through mobs trying to dodge this, trying to dodge that. If I'm on a red, trying to dodge other blues. Like that's that's what's fun PvP for that's, me. Yeah, that's what I like. I don't you like know, being this is the, This is basically instance PUBG style, no risk, no little bit of reward style PvP. But there I are think, the uh, PvP players who like just to field and don't want to dick with mobs. Yeah, I was going to say, they're, uh, they're definitely uh, there Kasha too. Here, only defender for this we have, I think right now, is a totally um, as far as having the no mobs in the, in the dungeon, um, uh, in like no mobs, um, I don't really care too much about it. It's it's kind of it's going to be similar to CCC no mobs. It's like CCC on foot with a different map each time because you have different dungeons. So it's it's nice. It's like an instanced different map kind of refreshing twist to CCC. Like I said, um, I don't really like being on foot, especially around mobs. I think it's just not fun. It's not a good mechanic. It's very slow paced, but I can go either way. I'm neutral about the no mobs thing. I'm not necessarily for it. It's just that one area. Yeah, my comment wasn't necessarily about the, the flashpoints, just about in general PvP style, you know, rather than having mini games. 
or, or instanced PvP. You know, I, I I feel the most exhilarated doing that open world PvP. I don't know if you guys feel similar. Yeah, this the 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 dungeons is kind of a bridge too. So I guess it is instant, so to speak, but there's also going to be other factors. Only the mobs in that little area, like the one room, so to speak, that the flashpoint is, disappear. So if you run them out of the, the little room, they're going to be right back into mobs and people killing mobs and random people running through. And now, like you said, that's not really going to matter on level one. Right. But. I mean, the whole linchpin of uh, on unmounted combat being like crap on the servers because tamers are too strong on foot like that's the thing that's why like people don't like fighting in dungeons because they know that people can bring tamers and they can melt you you know like that's part of it because most of the time mob aggro isn't that big of a deal for most mobs some of them have cc like they can web you or whatever like do that slime on the floor or they just do huge damage like the elder vamps they just charge you and fuck you up instantly but most of the mobs aren't that bad like there's there's some problem mobs that you have to watch out for all right so what about the sieges uh how do you guys think that will play out cuz that that is a ccc kind of event but there is a twist with the door the mortar the mortars the uh the cannons and the and the kind of fighting over the the sigil at the end Personally, I haven't had a chance to even get on there and test it, so it's going to be when it goes live that I, I have my either. opinions on it. I have to do it live. Yeah, it's on test now. It's not live. It it well, sounds cool. Um, we'll see if it actually gets utilized though. From what some people are telling me, they're not happy about like some crafting skills not being needed for them and stuff. Though I don't know if that's like important for anybody, but it just seems like a shame. Yeah, well, I think it's, uh, yeah, the original pitch was much, much more grand, but much, much, much more grand. This is uh, obviously stripped down yeah, I mean, to get the patch yeah. out the door. Mm-hmm. I was wondering if you guys thought that might play out differently than than how the struggles and and faction fights go currently. I think it will be different, but I like I said, I don't know much about it. So, See, I, I believe the reward is one percent of gold spent at town, and then any reds participating get their long terms dropped or, or a percentage of. I did not know yeah. that. Yeah, these are big these rewards. Also. That's interesting. Depending on the on the town and the dungeon, this could be big rewards for the top 10 guys that that get the most points. All right, here, I'll pull them up right now. Uh, three prestige points for the guild, top 10 participants. Um, top 10 participants get 1% of the entire amount of gold spent in the NPC vendors and a reward chest at level 4. That's, uh, that's for the sieges. I'm sorry, maybe I misspoke about the uh, reds. There was one with a reds count. I'll see if I can find it. It's CCC, I think, the reds one. That makes sense, too, being CCC. Yeah, I think you're right. Sorry, I misspoke. The the Castle Siege, um, I think it's more of an effort to bring people who don't normally PvP into PvP with, like, the gold rewards, people who are really after the pixels. For, like, a PvP guild, gold doesn't mean anything. Your shelf is stocked anyways. It, like maybe you can buy some cosmetics and stuff, but it's not really much of an incentive. You just want, like from pure PvP perspective, balanced, rated fights against equally skilled players. It's not really a big draw to fight maybe 30, 40 people. God knows who is who naked running around, you know, with pets. Uh, but it's this kind of stuff is good for people maybe get a taste for PvP. Maybe they start with like, like struggles, whatever the... Thank that you. is kind of what struggles were in the first place to like get people like interested in PvP, like with the with the no loot stuff. Like, there's no risk, whatever. Uh, we will have to see how this one goes too, I guess. Cause... Yeah. You do lose loot in the sieges, right? Yeah, yeah. I think uh, I think all these struggles keep the no loot. I think all the other three events have loot. I mean, I guess like it, it does have a reward for that risk for the for the sieges, so. I believe it's guild rewards too, right? So uh, hopefully that will get a lot of the bigger guilds to come out who might not be PvP based guilds, but Zerg a siege. As long as tamers are nerfed, we'll be fine. <laughs> have to nerf those tamers. All right, for the for the sake of time, we're going to move on to uh, community questions. So so Ace, if you would help me to start with the uh, the first question, Emmanuel, ping pong back and forth. Sure, sure. Um... Jack Jack Churchill, and I think we've kind of touched on this. Do you guys think the new PvP patch will get people involved that want to play something other than stereotypical tank mages and participate in something other than E-Bolt Rails? Like, what's, what's the alternative to E-Bolt Rails? Just 
Dexter's chasing people down, smashing them down. That's that's more fun. I, than yeah, the, I think he's the, talking about a variety. Yeah, Nox, Nox mages and Dexter's tamers, all of them right. up, and not just a tank mage. And, and I think part of that's, that stemmed from uh, a, a dissent about pulling some of the the complexity in castle sieges that was originally there. And the thing is, like with the evil rails, people think like uh, they they get the wrong impression because that was that's what struggles evolve into because you you, have, you just respawn, so people just evil rail, right? Like there's no real strategy; you just run around and look for people that are low, pretty much. Yeah. If you want to win and get the most points, yep. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like that, that's what you do. You just gotta want to get those points. I don't know, like. I'm sh- you can like you can still play other builds like you don't have to play a tank mage but like if you're looking to be the most efficient like with working as a group you want to be a tank mage you can still run dexters if you're good enough and like you're coordinated and like most importantly you probably want majory on that dexter so you can like pull for the team right you can still do that but you just have to like you have to learn to deal with like your class's limitations at that point um Go on to like a minute tangent about like general UO PvP. Um, I think people underestimate how good tank mage fighting is, how much fun it is. Like general UO, why, why the reason we still play this game after so many years? The other games don't have this kind of mechanics. The HP right. pools are really small. Spells do huge amounts of damage. The tempo is different. It's slow, but at the same time, you have to coordinate with your team to sync drop someone. It has unique mechanics in terms of heal. The G heal does more than half your HP as heal if you time it right positioning it's it's just it's, it's a, such a unique game in its own that all the mobas all daughters league of legends they don't have this kind of mechanics yeah, it's a shame people like just think it's all just fucking like hold flame strike and like yeah. target or whatever it's... It, it's so much more complicated than that when you actually go, go into depths of it yeah and that's exactly. the fun part of it so i don't really want to see people dexing these people who generally want this kind of stuff is because they cannot compete and they don't really understand the what the, they just think, like you said, oh, they're EB railing. But there's so much more to it. I mean, a lot of them just don't want to play, like, they, they they just don't want to play Mage for whatever reason. So it's, they just want to play whatever they want to play, you know? Yeah, and not everybody's supposed to compete on the same level. Like, just because right. this, this is an MMO and everybody's playing the same game, there's huge skill differences between players, right? Mm-hmm. If you <laughs> skewed up in any other game, you would be matched with close to your MMR or whatever. There's no MMR in this game. So people think, oh, this is just boring, but the things that go into it, the top level that people play this game is actually quite high, and it's impressive. So do, I don't... Do, sorry. Do you think UO misses some of the rock, paper, scissors, um, you know, between, like, a, a rogue class, a mage class, and a, and a tank or a dexter class? Since it's... Not, well, the thing is, that's not what UO is supposed to be about. It's supposed to be about, like, two skilled groups going, to, like, head-to-head. That, that's all it's supposed to be. Like, template is not supposed to matter. Yeah. The meta yeah, it's is like clear. a mindset from like a different like MMO, pretty much, and that's not what UO is supposed to be in terms of like the high level PvP. I agree. Like the, the other games, they have incredible amount of choices: hundred heroes, hundred right. different skills, items. So you optimize, like you find like these local optimizations in terms of builds, whatever power spikes, all of those, right? That that's what people enjoy. Ultima, server based, for instance, Renaissance, you have heal mages, right? That's the best template. Everybody plays it. Mm-hmm. On this server, you have either tank mages or you have scribes or spell damage mages. And you know that's the meta, and it's all about execution. It's more of a, like a fighting game. It, 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 happens, it becomes a much more timing, skill-based game when you have this kind of mechanics. That's why, it's, that's why it's fun. That's why we play it. Right. Every game has a meta, for sure. Even those games that have hundreds of choices, you still see only two or three being played. It, right, competitive levels. Classes are still like good, and, like the good classes are still good. Like in UO, is just like one class that's played predominantly because it's it's both the more most skill based because you have to like you have to know what the hell you're doing, and it's the most fun. All right, so the next question kind of feeds right into this discussion. Uh, what is the panel's favorite eras? Uh, I was talking about UO eras, and why and how does Atlantis compare with your previous favorite UO PvP experience in shards? This is from CLX. Personally, I like AOS, and I even like some of the later stuff. Um, I think that's just more when I learned to PvP and played it, so I had a lot of fun memories of, you know, when ninja mages were OP and you could death strike somebody and drop a flame strike and shit like that, but 
I've learned to play and adapt through pretty much every era. It's just all about where the population is for me. Right. Um, I mean, I'd say, like, Shard's similar to this one, but um, starting from... It's not really T2A, right? Because T2A is more... There, there's there's more mechanics when it comes to T2A. And you, you can see that just by, like, going to the era-accurate Shards that you have still running, right? Uh, like basically the T2A version, the IPY like started making. That's like my favorite era. Um, I don't really have a favorite anymore. I used to like Renaissance, Ren era with you know, stun and everything. But I just like Ultima a lot. I just like the game. Um, in an era, it's just a different flavor of it. It's just similar stuff, but just a little bit different. The insta hit stuff really grew on me. I'm really enjoying it a lot. The more I dueled and really grew on me, but I, I miss Explopots sometimes. I wish it was still a thing. Stun, I miss Stun, but at the same time, sometimes I don't miss it. It's just all of this era is different flavors. AOS was fun too. Uh, I haven't played it competitively, but it's, it's, it's just a good game. It's a great game. Some people are more particular about what, like, what eras they play or whatever, and I'm probably one of them. Because they can't compete in other eras, that's why. It's just, I'm just not willing to fucking to spend the time to like unlearn my insta hit, dude. That's yeah. that's, that's it. He yeah. used to insta hit. Learning it wasn't easy. See, this was my first shard that I played with insta hit. I PvP down, I should say. I never played a tank mage before. This shard is just Same. terrible starting up. Like it's just it's the worst yeah. thing ever. But then it's now it's really fun. It's a lot of fun. And for those that don't know, just give a brief brief description of what insta hit is um insta hit is when you equip a weapon you swing immediately in other eras when you equip your weapon you wait your swing timer before your first swing here if your swing timer is up as soon as you equip your weapon you can swing it yeah, that's what it. people understand it as yeah yeah there's the intricacies of it, but yeah. in a nutshell there's it going from slower weapons to faster and faster and slower and, and all different anchor intricacies. Uh, that's like called quick switch or whatever like that's what luthius calls it anyway well, we have another one from CLX, um, and, and he wanted to know which uh, which players do you think are, are best in that lance, and it could be either duelers or field PVPers or you know uh, uh, you know whatever part of the game. But who do you think are at the top of the the toughest opponents right now? Opponents, I think it also says guildies, but opponents wise, uh, one we want probably Piper. He's probably up there because we happen to have. The best one we've been one man on our guild, Pex Romaine. Shout out to Pex Romaine here, but I guess Pex, Piper, Gray, Axel was good, Bakaka is he used to be good. I don't know if he's still good, but he was out out, out there. We'll see. But these are the one we wanters, probably the top one we wanters. Yeah, I mean I, I agree with your list pretty much, but I think like there's a caveat because what people like don't understand about dueling in this era is like sometimes like different players play differently against like other people right some yeah. people perform better against other people like it's it's hard to say who's best a lot of the time it's true it's like it just depends on your dueling style like how you perform against another duelist pretty much like, for example like for some reason like i can i can beat pax consistently i don't know why but it happens but then piper kicks my ass 10 times in a row and then uh, like i don't want i don't get it it just happens like that I don't think you can beat Pax consistently, but we will also revisit that also. Eh, <laughs> I mean, I've beat him a lot, like, so we'll see. <laughs> we'll revisit and, all and this. What about not in the uh, not in the arena, but in the field? Easy. Dread Lord Bile, number one. Uh, <laughs> Bile. Bile's a beast. <laughs> I mean, uh, no opinion. Is I, I just haven't been in enough field. I'd, I'd agree with Zatoli. Piper's probably top of the list. Um Viton's a really good player too, all around. Like he's devastating in dungeons and shit as well. Um, then there's a lot of you know, Pax is really good. Zatoli's really good. Like a lot of people are solid for sure. But I'd say Piper is definitely probably number one on the list. And I really like his play style. He, he'll go balls to the wall regardless. He'll be eighteen percent still going offensive and somehow come out on top, you know, like it's crazy. From Steel, he was saying, who's the most fun to fight against? Is someone you just love, like, their fighting style and how they approach the game? That's a good question. BB, when there's, like, six of them in the dungeon chasing you through Cav 3, it's pretty fun. Ah. <laughs> good times. Just don't get fucking hammied, because you're going to hammied, like, four more times. 
I like all our enemies equally. I shout out to ISUP, SOF, um, whatever the Pipers or like like this. I don't know your guilds right now. Tier, you guys change guilds a lot. All of these enemies are fun to fight against. It really makes the game more fun to have these capable enemies that you can test your skill against. That's that's what makes this game fun. Shout out to all the enemies, you know. It's pretty much anybody who will come out and fight, right? I mean, exactly. Enjoy that. I know BB was doing a, a T8 and on on the same island that Lunk has their guild house. So Lunk went out there and the tier was out there and I think Anarchy ended up out there and SOF and I I mean there was there's was probably 20 reds out there and that was some of the most fun I had for Yeah, I was there. I died. I died in the first 2 minutes, but that's typical. Um do, do you want to get this this one? Who's who's better, Bakake or Akasha? We'll, we'll let you take that one since Akasha's not here. Fuck. Okay. Yeah, it's it's not really a competition. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was from Shadow. Akasha, I like Akasha way. a lot. Don't get me wrong, but look, he, Akasha is not really a dueler too much. Um, and field fighting, it's all right. But Bakake is a it's one of the top players. It is. He used to be. I reiterate, he used to be one of the top. At least Akasha can beat Chill. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> uh, all right, let's uh, let's put you three in the arena. Who comes out blacklisted? I'd probably be Zatoli or Kake. I always. I, mean, I, I, I am super out of practice, so Z would probably like if we did like best of ten or something. He'd probably beat me. Although I did duel Z a couple of weeks back, and I think we had some pretty even matches. I haven't yeah. dueled in months, seriously, at this point. So it's like <laughs> I don't know. I'm a choke artist, bro. When I step up to the plate, and I fucking lose. If it, if it doesn't mean anything, I'd have a pretty good chance. But if it's a tournament or for bragging rights or whatever, I fucking blow it every time. Yeah, get nervous. All right, just to wrap up the panel, let's just run around the panel real quick. What's your kind of final thoughts on, on what we're getting Friday? I'm excited. Um, like, I think there's probably going to be more shit that they're going to have to address because, you know, a lot of us are lazy and aren't going to put time to log into the test center and actually check out this shit. But... They put a lot of work in for sure and adding a lot of content and I don't see much negative coming from it to be honest. Like the pets are gonna be hopefully reduced and fixed. That'll be great. And constantly having shit to do when you're in non aggression. <laughs> like struggles and CCC and seizures and flashpoints and shit. It'll keep uh, a lot of activity stuff out there. Yeah, I just hope that like it's this isn't a case of too little, too late in terms of this patch because a lot of people like they did quit and they're probably playing classic WoW. They might come back. Well, uh, it's it's a situation it's a situation where we have to wait and see. I think. Ah, damn, I can't speak. Like all I want from this patch to play with my my team, my buddies, my family. No more codex, Sally. You know. You have guys, to hope you have yes. people to play against, you know? These guys. Like, there's always people to kill. I just want the people, the team, uh, to kind of... I want the bear to wake up again, you know, the wolf. Hopefully we can sink our teeth in this and try to be the best at it. See what we get. That's I hope to compete. Good luck. All right, I think that's going to wrap us up, guys. Thanks so much for your time. Uh, and thanks, Ace, for, for hopping on help me help me do this, put this together. Uh, I think uh, the only thing I have to say really is uh, we've got a YouTube channel now. So we're kind of putting out tutorial videos, um, call on the new player tutorial series. There's seven episodes out. I'm, I'm terrible at doing video, but I kind of took this as a learning experience. So trying to put that out there for the community. Also, uh, I think our next episode, we don't have anything scheduled yet, but it may be another panel. What we'll to see, uh, Kind of what I'm doing with Ace here is we're going to try a new format. I think we're going to do kind of like a discussion on Outland and current events, kind of add that back to the show, not, not make each episode a uh, full interview. So we may like talk about what guilds are doing, what's kind of happening with the patch, sh- shit like that. So we'll start doing that every two weeks here uh, on our next show. So thanks again, guys, for hopping on and making the time to to come on here and, and talk about this great game thank you thanks for having me yeah thanks for having me